uh, we decided to do something different and traveled on a boat. We leave tomorrow morning and tonight we're having 70 mile an hour winds and rain up on up and down the state to the point that there's flood warnings everywhere. So we know when to travel. Welcome to 3 a.m. This is what the RV looks like when you have a storm with high wind warnings. It's been very windy and we're gonna pull the backslide in before we leave so that it doesn't get destroyed while we're gone. And uh, finish getting ready. Very tight, very tight quarters. Well, we made it through the treacherous weather to the airport. It was windy and rainy all the way up until the sun came up. And now we're sitting here looking out at a tiny little rainbow waiting for our flight. Sue's over there looking for the rainbow. We fly to Ontario, California, then Dallas, and then Miami. Here we go, we travel light. Yeah. <laughs> my swimsuit and my sandals. <laughs> We are across the street from Miami Beach. We came out to see what it looks like. We leave on the cruise tomorrow. Miami Beach is surprisingly cold and windy today. Look at this plane up here towing a banner. He is just barely moving. He's got a strong headwind he's going into. There goes a carnival ship heading out to sea from the port of Miami. I'll go the other way. We'll, we'll be over there tomorrow. Our ship is a Norwegian cruise line ship, the Norwegian Bliss. Hey! hey. Made it to the Atlantic Ocean in Miami Beach. Yeah. Made it all the way to right. This is where they filmed exterior shots for the movie, The Birdcage. It looks familiar. I wasn't even thinking that this is where they shot that. We're losing our daylight, so we'll probably head back to the hotel. <laughs> well, I didn't film much. We made it to the Port of Miami and the Norwegian Cruise Line Terminal. And uh, it's been an interesting day. We returned the rental cars back to the airport and roads got shut down and blocked us. Then we took a cab back here and got on the ship and thought everything was good and then they pulled us off, took us down to security because they found a 40 caliber bullet in my suitcase. I have no idea how it got there. We decided to come to the formal dining room instead of the on-deck sail away party for obvious reasons. There's food here. It's late and the observation lounge is mostly empty, so it's a good time to show you what it looks like. This ship is huge, has 4,000 guests and 1,600 crew. And they do have cool places like this observation lounge, but I feel like the emphasis was on make it cool and marketable and not practical. It's not big enough. Up here in the observation lounge, they have this model of the ship. So you can see what it looks like. They have a speedway, electric go-karts at the back end of the ship, two water slides, a tube slide and a body slide, two pools. And then up here in the front is an area called the Haven, these top two or three decks all for the Haven. And then the big glass around the front, the lower two decks are open for the observation lounge for normal guests, and the upper ones are for strictly Haven guests. And this ship primarily does Panama Canal and Alaska, 
which I would argue you want more forward-facing guest areas. And this one does not have very many. Oh, look, stabilizers. This is the adult pool and the kids pool. Kids pool is aft, adult pool is forward. And then also forward is this giant screen where they show stuff like football games and movies. This is deck 18, looking back over deck 17 and 16, towards the back of the boat. And this is their tube slide. Go down it on an inner tube. And then it comes down, it's somewhere up on deck 18 or 19, and ends on deck 17. And this is the kids pool and splash area. Where they have their jogging track and then this is their drop slide We have a diner back here that I have never seen anybody in. This is the Speedway. They have a bunch of little electric go-karts and a two-level track. And I think, if I remember right, it's 15 bucks to go for like 10 minutes. Uh, you can also buy a pass that lets you go whenever the car, whenever the track is open for the duration of the cruise. So I think there's somebody out here right now. It's probably one of these people that have the entire cruise package thing because yep he's all alone I mean if that's what you want to do the days you're at sea go for it this cruise we have we're starting out with two days at sea we have two days at sea and then we're in port and then we're going through the Panama Canal and then we're in port and then we have a couple more days at sea and then port days scattered but this cruise has quite a few sea days these things are quiet back here by the smokestacks and this is one of the higher up decks you can get to i am down on deck eight on the waterfront is what they call it quiet down here too, except for the wind noise. Moon's out, decks are clear, it's windy, we're down pretty low on the ship. And there are a bunch of um, upcharge restaurants, like this one here is the Steakhouse, right on the waterfront. This deck you can go right to the back of the ship. There's no access to the front or the bow on this deck. But back here, it's still kind of neat. It's noisy, though. This ship, when it's at sea, its navigation speed is about 22 knots. And then down below on deck 7 is the Manhattan dining room, one of the main dining rooms. You can look down on it from here. And they have windows around the back of the ship down in the Manhattan room that looks out back here. It's cool that you can come all the way aft, but I wish on this ship you could go all the way forward too. 
one thing it's missing. This is the interior on deck eight. There's this pub, the cavern, and more bars, lounges. And this thing I think looks like chocolate. But out here is the main lobby. So we're on deck eight and this lobby looks down on deck seven and six. And they've got this gigantic chandelier. That changes colors. This is a cigar and mojito bar. Casino is down one level. I'm gonna drop my phone. So sparkly. The jewelry district. <laughs> oh yeah. And we made it to the aft elevator bank. There are two banks of elevators, one forward and one aft. These are the ones we use to get to our stateroom. And then back here, we are one level above the two-level Manhattan dining room. And Los Lobos and Cagney's Steakhouse share this space up here. One's on one side, one on the other. We are down two decks on deck six at the chocolate shop. And the main lobby at the grand staircase and giant chandelier. This is also where the comedy club is which is always packed and it's been booked the entire trip, so we haven't been in there. There's also the art gallery where they have auctions for pieces of art. And then of course, another bar and on either side of this bar are two restaurants, Taste and Savor. They are both complimentary, not upcharge restaurants. All right, we're back at the aft elevators. I think that's it for now. We'll try and give you more looks at the ship, especially in the light, and a room tour later on. But for now, I think that's it. So we'll see you soon.